A warning. This podcast contains adult language, accounts of sexual abuse, suicidal thoughts, and other deeply sensitive material. Please use discretion. Previously on Terminal, The Dying Church Planter. No one is indestructible. Not even Richard Pope. I was so like demented and twisted and angry because it's easier to be angry than to be broken. You know what I mean? He survived rape. He survived the death of his best friend. He survived multiple suicide attempts. He survived a cancer diagnosis. But then he met a kid who shared the gospel with him. And Richard broke. Like, I knew the stuff. I knew what he was trying to do. I knew he was trying to convert me. And I had no defense to that, because it was genuine. And so when he fell in love with Jesus, I had so much more joy and peace. And then when he fell in love with a pretty girl, she told me she liked me. And I was like, yes. And then when he fell in love with the idea of planting a church. Why do we need to plant more churches? Because God told us to. Then it felt like finally, he defeated all his monsters. It felt like he could now live happily ever after. But this was not the end. My cancer comes back for the second time, and I didn't know anything about planning a church. We had no money, no partnership, no funding. What do I do? I'm Tony Hudson, and this is Terminal, The Dying Church Planter, Episode 4. A little help from my friends. One day, a long time from now, if someone were to write a story about what happened in Salisbury, Maryland in 2019, they will probably not begin here. We were sitting around a table praying that God would radically save our friends. God, we have friends who don't know you, who don't go to church. What if we created a church for them? And we did. And it failed. No one wants to hear a story about a Lone Ranger church planter who tried once and failed once. No, one day, a long time from now, if someone were to write a story about what happened in Salisbury, Maryland in 2019, they'll probably begin here. I got a text message from Richard, which was kind of like a, hey, uh, I admire what you guys are doing. And I want to be, I think I want to be a church planter. That is Keith Meyer. Back then, Keith, as the director of missions for the Eastern Baptist Association, was something of a church plant talent scout. And so uh, we sat down for coffee and you could just tell that he had the gift of gather. And uh, it was a good, it was a really good meeting. I think that He was sold right from the beginning, just kind of the network and the brotherhood and how solid everybody seemed. And and so I I said to him, hey, come and hang out with us. The network Keith is referring to is Send Network. Send Network is a family of existing churches that help start new churches all over the US and Canada. Keith, through Send Network, had access to just about everything Richard Pope would ever need to start a church. And so the story of what happened in Salisbury, Maryland in 2019 would probably begin here, on the day Keith Meyer introduced Richard Pope to Send Network and then connected him to people like Phil Gifford. There's no easy button or quick fast pass to church planning. Like it just takes a grind sometimes. Phil helps interview and assess wannabe Send Network church planters. So the church planter assessment that that Send Network offers is a two-day, we call it a retreat, where the goal is to determine all that you've told us and say, we don't necessarily see church planting in you, or maybe we see church planting possibilities, but there's still some work to be done, or or we see church planting, you should go forward into this, and we want to come and support you in that. So Richard had the um, unique opportunity of going through during COVID 
And so all of our interviews happened through Zoom. And it was it was interesting to poke and prod because first I noticed it was both he and Peyton together. And I remember doing the interview with them and coming upstairs and talking to my wife and saying, this couple is going to do something special. Like there is, they are the real deal and I can't wait to see where it's going to go. Where it went, at least after Phil and others gave Richard and Peyton a thumbs up, was to Daryl McCready. If you meet Richard and you spend much time with him, you, you, you'll quickly realize he's, he's different. <laughs> Daryl pastored Sunrise Church in Berlin, Maryland. Sunrise became Richard and Peyton's sending church. Ascending church will say, uh, nothing we have belongs to us, it all belongs to God, so therefore we have no right to hold it with a closed fist. And that means people, resources, anything God wants to reallocate or redirect or call out. And so we, need, we, 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 uh, we agreed to support them financially, and then we try to resource them in any way that we can or that God shows us that we should meaning um, he needed sound equipment. We had sound equipment, so we gave him sound equipment. Um, uh, he needed a trailer, I think. We gave him his trailer. It's just that kind of a heart, the, mi- the mindset that it's not ours anyway. The SEND Network, the local Baptist association, and his sending church gave Richard what they could. For a man who was fighting cancer, again, for a man who had fell the first time he tried to plant a church, This was a strong second start. All Richard Pope needed now was people. January of 2019 was our first meeting as a initial team. And there were maybe five or six of us that Richard initially pulled in that he asked, would you be, uh, willing are you pray about being called to this uh to help start canvas from there february of 2019 we had our first launch team meeting and each month after that we kept having meetings this is how canvas church of salisbury maryland was born once a month richard and peyton pope invited friends and strangers over for worship and bible study And when Richard would tell them Canvas was a church plant, no one had any idea what he was talking about. I'm I'm guessing church planting was not something that, I mean, did you even know what church planting was? No, I just thought churches were a thing. I didn't realize there was a way to start them. This is Richard's friend, David Elliott. But, no, so I was about mm, 19, almost 20. 19 or 20. And I had stepped away. I had stepped away from the church for a little bit. Like I'm having a, like a small Christ centered crisis with myself where I'm like, what is there for me? And Richard, he saw more potential in me than I thought or other people thought too. So it's nice. But he was like, Hey dude, come help me with this thing. I'm like, okay. Okay, you're the planter. I'm just going to help you. There were like six of us on the team. Team grew to seven, eight, nine, ten. And uh, I had people who started going, oh, I'll help you with this. But so many of them were newer believers. Or they weren't church people. Or they hadn't been in church in ten years. And so that is why Richard and Peyton decided they would meet, pray, worship, and make disciples slowly. Then they would launch Canvas Church officially in October 2020. Or at least, that was the plan. Richard and I, he typed up a kind of like a plan and an outline, and uh, me and some of the other leaders just spent some time looking over it, talking about it, just those initial things of what we wanted the church to eventually be. And then um, we just kept meeting and we kept doing these launch team meetings. So then in November of 2019, I got a phone call from him saying that the cancer was gone. And I was just crazy. It was super awesome. And then 
we got married March of 2020. We were planning on launching that October and that didn't happen because of COVID. So during COVID, we still gathered together like we had been doing once a month, but it was on Zoom, which was not fun, uh, but it still worked and God still moved and people actually joined the church through Zoom, which was crazy. Every month, at least one new person showed up unannounced on Canvas Church's virtual online doorstep. Richard and Peyton's unofficial online-only church was growing. It was the most 2020 thing ever, and they had no explanation for it. No earthly explanation. Exhibit A, Sarah Oltman. I am Sarah. I was part of the launch team for Canvas. Um, I'm a single mom. I have four kids and um, work full-time. Been born and raised in Salisbury. So I had been to a lot of churches, but at that point, I, um, my husband and I had separated, and um, I really wanted to, I'm like, God, I'm in a broken place, and I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the future holds, but I know that I can't not lead my kids, and I can't not walk with you. I could, I could lay in this brokenness and just kind of wallow in it, but God, you know, circumnavigated and was like, you're going to go make, turn left here. It was like a GPS without a voice. And just scrolling through Facebook one day, just sitting on my phone, just mindless, not even thinking about what I was looking at. And then bam. And it was just a picture of the logo. And they were putting out an ad looking for um, team members for their worship team to kind of help launch the church. And you know, typically when you join a church, you've heard about it from a friend, you've heard about it from a grandma, you've, you know, now you can watch stuff online so you can see and hear a message, kind of check it out before. This was all sight unseen. Sarah had sung in church ever since she was a little girl. And so on a whim, she recorded a song and sent it in. I sang Reckless Love for my audition. And... I was torn between that song and another song, and I was like, no, I think I'll go with this one. Like, I could do both, but it's fine. I can, it shows my range. And that was, you know, I was thinking vocally, like, where am I going to sound the best? Can you sing me a couple lines of that song? Okay. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found and leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Sarah recorded her audition, then emailed it to a man she'd never met who pastored a church she knew nothing about. And then several days later, she received a text from Canvas Church asking, can we meet? And we didn't talk until I officially met them at one of their earlier launch team meetings. And I walked in and I didn't know anybody was there. I didn't know who Richard was because I hadn't even seen a picture of him. We had only spoken in text messages after I had sent him my video audition. And it was really cool. He shared with me, um, and this kind of got me emotional, the day that he watched it was the day that he got the call from the doctors that his cancer had come back. The cancer that had come and gone and then come and gone had come again. And the doctor, yeah, he just told me, he's like, hey, cancer's back. It's growing kind of quickly, and that's not good. Richard remembers the date. It was December 11th, 2020. Up until then, the pieces had been falling neatly into place. COVID restrictions had been lifted. The Canvas Church launch team was meeting in person. They'd set a new official launch date, Easter 2021. 
and they'd found a fixer-upper facility where their new church could meet. But then there was December 11th. So we finally get this place, and uh, we start renovating. But the whole time I was puking and having diarrhea all myself. And we pressed through. And we renovated. And then I got sicker and sicker and sicker. And I thought it was just the treatment. I was like, oh, man, this treatment sucks. I need better treatment. I was like, man, they should pick better poison to give us. And then I start having pains. And they're like, hey, it's spreading, it's spreading your, your lymphatic system. So, yeah, they did surgery. I was in here the day after surgery, by the way. <laughs> because I just, wanted, I just wanted to, I don't know. That's the thing. I was so distracted, Tony. Like, like I was so distracted that I didn't really deal with it. I was just busy. So, the, so December went by, January went by, February almost completely went by. And towards the end of February, uh, what had happened was the doctors had told him that it was spreading. So they did a surgery to see if they had gotten everything. And then one month before the official launch date of Canvas Church, Richard's doctors told him what they would discovered. They did not, nor would they ever be able to get everything. They initially told me two years. Another opinion gave me three to five years. There's really no way of knowing. And, man, I didn't deal with it for that first week because I have never been angrier at God since becoming a believer. Like, why would God, in his infinite power, right? Here's where my theology hurts. In his complete sovereignty, why would God do this to me? Richard kept his terminal diagnosis a secret for as long as he could. For one week, when anyone would ask, how did your test go? He would answer, great, I'm all good. But the one person who knew him best could tell something wasn't right. And then finally, we were in here sweeping up nails <laughs> from the construction on like a Friday or Saturday night uh, a week later, because that's what you do when you're planning a church and it's being renovated. Uh, and she said, you're lying to me. Something's not right. You don't lie to me. What are you lying about? And he broke down. We were here at the church. We were cleaning. And that's when he told me that he uh, actually had been told that it was terminal. And he apologized profusely for lying. He just didn't know how to tell me, which, of course, I did nothing but forgive him because I wouldn't have even known how I would respond if I was in his shoes. Uh, but right after that, we really didn't do anything other than uh, just kind of sit there. So, um, yeah, I didn't really know how to wrap my head around it. Richard was dying. And now that he had told his wife, he would have to tell his launch team. We talked a lot about how to tell the church. Because once again, they knew that his cancer was back. So it wasn't like they you were just finding all of this out at once. Uh, so they knew he had had cancer. They knew he had had surgery. He was in a wheelchair. Like they knew he, he was going through chemo and whatnot. And so everyone was awaiting the results of the surgery as well. Uh, so on a Sunday, Richard and I, I don't even remember if I was standing up there or not. Honestly, it was a very emotional, emotional Sunday. But uh, he told them what the doctor said. He sat us all down when he told the entire church. He's like, hey, it's gotten worse and it's not getting better. This is David Elliott. And it feels very cold, kind of like a morgue. 
is the best way to describe that feeling that was in the room. It was somber and kind of like you could hear the pin drop. He's like, we're still going to launch this church, but if you want to leave, you're more than welcome to. We can help you find good good Bible preaching churches to help get you connected with because we do understand that this is a big burden to ask of you guys as a launch team versus an already established church. When you first told everybody here um, what the prognosis was, if I'm in a church plant and it's brand new and the guy who started it just told me he's terminally ill and he might not be here two years from now, I don't know if I would stay. Me either. And so... That Sunday, when we told them, exactly one month before launch, exactly one month before launch, I said to them, I don't know how long I'm going to be your pastor, but our circumstance doesn't change our calling. So, if you want me to do this, I will. But if you guys don't want to do it, then it's done. Coming up on Episode 5 of Terminal, The Dying Church Planter. What do you do when there's nothing you can do? We gotta, we're going to get through this, and um, I'm going to cry. Um, excuse me. What do you do when a monster strikes at the worst possible time? Why him? You know, when he's got this young church. Why this guy? And when people around you begin to doubt. Wow, like Richard is spending his whole life dedicating himself to God. And this is what you get? What do you do when there's nothing you can do? Cancer or no cancer, we're still here. So there's still work to be done. Richard and his friends did the most counterintuitive thing they could think of. Not a single person left. Yeah. A lot of them new believers and they didn't leave. That's when I realized I don't have a launch team, I have a church. A church that had no idea what they were getting themselves into. That's on the next episode of Terminal, The Dying Church Planter. You can find photos, videos, and other bonus material. And you can learn more about church planting with SEND Network at TerminalChurchPlanter.com. This episode of Terminal, The Dying Church Planter, is dedicated to Jackie Taylor. Jackie worked with Richard to assess potential SEND Network church planters until she passed away from cancer in July of 2023.